We all could have been sick. We could have been sleeping in our grave. But God allowed us to come together one more time. Amen. So I want to give honor to God tonight. I thank God for that song. It's not a whole lot of words to that song. But he did allow us to come together one more time. Amen. And so I give honor to God tonight. I give honor to his son, Jesus. I give honor to the gift of the Holy Spirit. I give honor tonight to Bishop Joseph White, the founding and presiding bishop of the Church of the Living God International. I give honor tonight to the Board of Directors. I also give honor to Elder Walter Jones, our District Superintendent. I give honor to Assistant Pastor Harris and all ministers, saints, and friends tonight, those that are here and those that are watching from afar. Amen. And tonight we're going to be continuing on our Christian education outline, but we're actually going to skip back up to number one. Um, if you don't have your own outline, there should be outlines at the end of each row. So we're going to be in the first section, and we're going to start at letter D. So section number one and letter D. So tonight's topic is, we should desire the power of God. We should desire the power of God. I'm going to be writing on the board tonight. We should desire the power of God. Amen. And tonight we're going to start out um, reading from, if you turn with me to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 and verse 8. We should desire the power of God. And one of the first things I was taught in church is that Hebrews 11 is often referred to as the faith chapter. The faith chapter. So Hebrews 11 is all about faith. And over in 11 in verse 8, when you get there, please say amen. Amen. And the Bible says... Over in Hebrews 11 and 8, the Bible says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. So it's letting us know, starting out, the first thing Abraham had to do was just obey God. Simply just obey God. It said he didn't know where he was going. But God told him to go, and he went. And so I'm going to write down on the board tonight, as we're talking about desiring the power of God, the first thing we have to do to begin to desire the power of God is obey God. Amen? Amen. So put on here, Abraham obeyed God. And if you have a notebook, um, you can take notes tonight, or if you have a device to take notes on, I highly encourage you to take notes. That way the Spirit can bring it back to you in your own private time and studying. Um, and then on the next scripture it says, in, uh, tonight over in Hebrews 11, and I'll continue from 9. The Bible says, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and the heirs with him of the same promise. So we have to picture this in our mind. It's like if, if all of us in here said, you know, if this is the olden days, I'm the leader of the group or you're the leader of the group, and you say, well, God told us we need to go and travel, and he has a place that he's promised us. He has a city he's promised us, and we're going to be better off when we get to where God has sent us. And so that's what's going on at this time. This is what this is talking about, how Abraham... Isaac and Jacob and others, they're traveling for the Lord. They don't know where they're going, but they're just obeying the word of the Lord. And the people that were with him, in verse 9, they were of the same promise. And it lets us know if you are with the right people, you can inherit what God has for them. And we say it all the time, being in the right place at the right time. And when you find yourselves with the people of God, you will not only become like the people of God if you continue to hang around them, but you can inherit the, the things and the blessings that God has for his people. Amen. And in verse 10 it says, For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder 
and maker is God. So he was looking for something in particular. So God gave him some hints. God gave him some clues. He didn't tell him where it was and what it was going to look like. But he said, it's something that I'm going to give you, that I'm going to make for you, something that you can't get from nobody else. He said, just keep traveling, keep trying, keep having patience, keep looking until you receive that thing that you cannot get from anywhere else. Talking about that we should desire the power of God tonight. In verse 11, the Bible says, through faith, also Sarah, and Sarah is Abraham's wife, through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed or to have a baby and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. And so the part to take note in that scripture is Sarah judged God. What did she judge God? Faithful. Sarah judged God faithful. So a part of receiving or desiring the power of God, we have to judge God as being faithful to do what he said he's going to do. First, you have to obey God, whatever it is he says that we should do by his word and by his spirit. And then we have to judge him faithful that if we obey him, he's going to do what he said. Amen. And we'll go right along in verse 12. It says, therefore, therefore is condition, which means what we previously read, because what happened previously, since Sarah judged God to be faithful, the Bible says, therefore, sprang the even, even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the sea innumerable. That's saying, therefore, since Abraham obeyed, Therefore, since Sarah counted God faithful, they conceived the child. And of that child came pretty much everybody else. So many people from generation to generation, because that's what God had promised Abraham. We'll study that another time. But this is, what, this is what this is referring to. That by Abraham obeying, Sarah counting God as faithful, they received the promise. And the Bible says, and this promise in particular is talking about having a child and the generations come after him, and then Jesus coming through the lineage. In verse 13, the Bible says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They were persuaded of the promises. So number three, they were persuaded. They were persuaded of the promises of God. They are persuaded of the promises of God. And I believe we have a of a person in the New Testament. Can anyone tell me where I'm going? Somebody else that was persuaded? Anybody know his name tonight? Paul. Paul said, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, and he goes down a whole list, principalities, nor things to come, nor things that are present. He talks about neither creeping thing, he, Paul was persuaded that he was not going to let anything, anyone, anytime, any situation separate him from not just the love of God, but the promises of God. And our main promise is heaven. And so these people, they were persuaded and they embraced what God had for them. They embraced God's promises. If God said he was going to send them, they believed it. They embraced it. Their life changed. They lived it. They moved. They did what it was to show God that they believed. And one thing I want to do tonight is define desire. The word desire. Because it says we should desire the power of God. And we know that this world has waxed worse the Bible said it would. Situations are worth, worse off. Words don't mean the same thing they used to. 
Or now when you hear a word, it's always usually ties to something evil. And that's why I love definitions, because they can help you really understand what the word means. So for the word desire, a definition I found from Webster Dictionary is to hope for, to wish for, ask for, Or invite. And then it says a conscious, which means the thinking, thinking about it. So conscious impulse towards something. And I'll read this again once I finish writing. A formal Request for an action. And that's a pretty long definition. So the definition that I found online for the word desire is to hope for, to wish for, ask for, or invite. A conscious impulse towards something, a formal request for an action. So if we tie this definition into our topic tonight, which is we should desire the power of God. This lets us know that we should hope for the power of God. We should wish for the power of God. Some people speak against wishing. You can say wish if you like. I wish I had this. I wish. Well, how come you won't say you wish you had the power of God? So the definition said to wish for. So to wish for the power of God. To ask for the power of God. To invite the power of God into your life. To invite it. We invite peace. Lord, I want peace. We invite happiness. We, we invite all these other things that we like. So to invite the power of God. And then this, this conscious impulse. An, impulse. an impulse is like something that causes an action or a quickening. So it's two words, two things. Conscious means, means you have to think about it. And then the impulse has to cause you to do something. And so when Abraham, when he took his people with him, it was a conscious impulse. He thought about it and he said, I'm going to obey God. And the impulse was, come on, family. Come on, friends. Let's go ahead and go because God said he's going to do something for us. And then it says towards something. So he was moving toward the promises of God. So we should consciously think about the power of God and have an impulse to do something to receive the power of God and move toward the direction that the power of God comes from, which is heaven, which is God, through Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, whom is the power of God himself. And it says a formal request for an action. Have you made a formal request with God to ask, for the power of God. You can let your request be made known unto God. The Bible says, let your moderation be made known. You can ask God, put in a formal request. It's like on the job, you put in a formal request to take vacation. You don't just not say nothing and expect to be off. Expect this action to happen. Expect you to not come to work and not get fired. But you put a request in and then it gets approved. And God has already approved that he wants to give you power, that he wants to save your soul. The Bible lets us know he has approved for the Holy Ghost to come and save you and to fill you. So we have to put a formal request in for the action that God needs to take to save your soul. So that's the definition of desire. And when the Spirit comes in, he will help you apply these natural definitions to the Bible and it'll help you to stand. Amen. Because the Bible says the Spirit will teach you all things. And that's why you don't have to change the Bible. That's why you don't have to change the words that are in the Bible. Because when you believe on Jesus as the Scripture has said, and you go to a higher height and deeper depths, you will find out the Holy Ghost will teach you. He will teach you what the Bible says. He will help us to understand. Because about two and a half months ago, Sister Ladre said, in all you're getting, get a understanding. She's been holding on to that. So as we move on tonight, going on down to 
verse 14. So after they, they died in faith, but they were persuaded. So they lived their life for the promises of God because they died in faith. They didn't lose faith and then die. They died still holding on, still having faith. So 14 says, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Those that say they love God, those that say they live for God, you're declaring plainly that you're seeking somewhere else or something else beyond what you already have. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here tonight. If, if we had it all together, or if we thought like we used to think, which is which we didn't need God, we didn't need to come to church, we really, at that time, we really thought we just had it. If you really think about it, the reason we didn't come to God and come to church, we thought we were good. Even when the situation was bad, we didn't think we needed God, we just went through. But it says, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they may have had opportunity to have returned. The Bible saying that as you're moving forward in God, if you're mindful of where you came from, you might go back to it. If I'm trying to go forward, I'm trying to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, which is heaven, eternal life. But I'm always thinking back, thinking about how it used to be. The good old times. Because the Bible says sin is pleasurable for a season. So you lie to yourself and Satan lying to you both if you think that you didn't have some good times before you came to God. Because that's not scriptural. You did have some good times and it was pleasurable. So the Bible's warning us. It says that if these people who were pressing toward, who had faith, if they had started to think about where they left, they would have had an opportunity to go back. We have an example in the Bible. Lot and his wife, they were in a city called Sodom and Gomorrah. And there was all kinds of evil. There was so much evil going on. God said, I'm going to destroy the whole city and everybody and everything that is in there. And no matter how many times the people prayed, God's mind was made up. And finally, he said, I'll, I'll save just Lot. Because Lot was just. He was trying his best. He got caught up in loving the world. But God, remember, he called him. God, remember, he wanted to save him. And so he said, Lot, you and your wife flee. Leave your kids. They want to stay back. They don't want to live for God. He said, you're going to have to leave the kids behind. You're going to have to leave the dog behind. You're going to have to leave the car behind. Put that, make this real today. God said, I need you two to get on up out of there because I'm about to destroy the entire city. And so they're running and they're leaving. The angels are, had to pull them out because they didn't want to leave, even, even just Lot. To let you know you can be in God and God has a plan for you and you're still trying to look back. God already told him, I'm trying to save you. And the angels had to come and pull him and his wife out. And so they're running. You got to see it. They're in the desert. They're wherever they were. They're running. And behind them is this city. So they're outside the border of Springfield. So we're just running down the interstate now trying to get out of town. And they said, don't look back. The angels said, don't look back. Don't look back. And Lot said, you know what? I ain't going to look back. They done drug me out of here. God done gave me another chance because prior to this, Lot chose to, he made the wrong decisions. He ended up in trouble. So by this point, he said, you know what? I'm just going to keep on running. I ain't going to look back. But his wife, somebody say, but his wife. But his wife loved the world so much. She loved those pleasures so much. She loved that city that she was leaving behind. She loved those people that she was leaving behind. She loved that entertainment she was leaving behind. She loved that job she was leaving behind. She loved that garden and that house that she was leaving behind. And the Bible says she turned around and looked back. And the Bible says she turned into a pillar of salt. On the spot, died on the spot. And just like, made it out. Just Lot is just as in holy, but just Lot is in only Lot. Have you ever thought about that? Just Lot is in he was just and righteous, but just as in since his wife looked back, just Lot made it out. One person. So that's what this, this is getting to when it says, if you have the occasion to look back, if you're mindful, if you're thinking about what's behind you, the enemy will help you have an occasion to go back. But we're not focusing on going back tonight. But God is so good that he gives us the good and the bad. 
Because the Bible says that when we get to judgment, he's going to be justified when he speaketh. And clear when he judges, the only way you can be justified is if you was fair across the board. Nobody would be able to get and say, well, Lord, I didn't know that if I look back, um, I wasn't going to make it. He said, no, I'm justified because I told you. It's like when the kids get in trouble and you told them not to, hey, you're going to take that punishment today because I'm justified because I let you know if you stole from that store, it was going to be something to pay. And you got to pay the price. And that's what God does. So continuing on here, in verse 16, it says, but now they, and it says, but now they, because it's saying, okay, they done got past looking back. God has helped them. God has delivered them as he has helped us and delivered us. That's why we're here tonight. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. So number four is... Number four is, we should desire heaven. We should desire heaven. Because heaven is a better country. Heaven is a better place. Everything is better in heaven. And I'm not going to spend too much time on that because we know, with even just a little bit of scripture that you know, Heaven's better than where we are right now. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, if you turn with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. Talking about we should desire the power of God. There's so much that comes with the power of God. 1 Peter 2 and verse 2. When you get there, please say amen. And the Bible says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. As newborn babes, or as newborn babies, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. And I'm actually going to start putting spaces between this on the board. So the next one, number five, is God is sincere in saving us. God is sincere in saving us. Because for it to be called the sincere milk of the word, Sincerity has to come from God. He's sincere when he said he wants to cleanse you. He wants to deliver you. He wasn't just lightly saying things like we do sometimes. I'll say I'm going somewhere and halfway don't want to go. I'll say I'm going to mow the yard and a whole week goes by. Because I wasn't sincere when I said it. I said it because it just needed to be done. But God is not saying he's going to save us because it needs to be done. Because it doesn't have to be done. He doesn't have to save us. We need to be saved. The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God. And so God is sincere about saving us. And the more we realize that, then we can reach out to him in all sincerity. And this goes back to Sarah judging that God was faithful. That promise. She said, God is sincere about this. I might be 100 plus years old, however old I am, I believe God's going to do this because he's sincere. And the more and more we get that in our lives, the more we'll see God move because the Bible says he waits that he would be gracious unto us. It's sincere when you wait, especially when you don't have to. God doesn't have to wait. But it's sincere when you wait, amen. Amen. And the Bible says also in uh, verse 2, the word of God enables us to grow up in God. So I'm going to write down number six point. It enables us to grow up in God. And so all of this ties into that we should desire the power of God. And in our desiring, these are results or experiences we shall have. And so when you 
desire the sincere milk of the word, it will cause you to grow up in God. You'll grow up just like a baby does. And I don't know of too many people who give milk to a child and they're not sincere about it. They take their time. They're careful with it. They really want the baby to grow and to be nourished. There's some sincerity in there. And so the Bible says also over in 1 Peter 2, I'm going to go down to verse 3. It says, if so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And wrapping this back up to the second verse, it's saying that you should desire the sincere milk of the word if you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Has God been gracious to you? Then we should desire the sincere milk of the word even the more. And the Spirit has to help us do that. Because I believe, just like you said, He's been gracious to you. He's been gracious to me. So I'm saying, Lord, help me to desire it even the more. Because I know you've been gracious. And the Bible said that we should desire it even the more. And in verse 4 it says, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. You got to know that you've been chosen of God and you are precious in his sight. So verse, uh, not verse 7, number 7. Chosen of God and precious in his sight. And this is an area where Satan fights everybody that's called. The first part of that verse says, disallowed indeed of men. That means people are not going to like you all the time. People are going to talk about you, put you down. They'll call you ugly. They'll say you'll never be anything. They'll, they'll, people just treat us bad. So the Bible's telling us that we'll be disallowed of men. Not everybody's going to be your friend. But it says, in God's sight, we have been chosen and we're precious. So that should be a comfort to know that no matter what happens to us, no matter what anybody says, no matter what the situation is, as long as we realize that God has chosen us and we're precious to him and he is sincerely trying to save us and he's faithful and he's promised that we can desire the power of God and he will give it to us. Amen. That he's not concerned. We can be concerned about what the boss says, the friends say, the family say, but God is not concerned about what anybody thinks about us. He's concerned about what he thinks about us, and the Bible says he knows his thoughts concerning us. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end, and that expected end is heaven. So verse 5 con confirms that ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So number eight on this list, offer up sacrifices. Is that what it says? Spiritual sacrifices. That difference in those two words is as big as the earth is. Because if you teach somebody to offer up sacrifices, then they might go get some fruit. They might go, you know, kill a bull, put them on some rocks and some fire. And be offering up sacrifices. But that's what they did in the Old Testament. God requires now that we offer up spiritual sacrifices. And as we go on to know the Lord, we learn that it's not evil spirits we're talking about. The spiritual sacrifices have to be by the Holy Spirit. And so he's saying to offer up spiritual sacrifices. So I'm going to keep writing here number eight. Offer up spiritual sacrifices. And pardon my sloppy handwriting, it's a little shaky up here. But to offer a spiritual sacrifices, that's one of the reasons we should desire the power of God. That's how all this ties together. Because we can't offer up spiritual sacrifices without the power of God. And so Bible study is letting us know these key points tonight. It's so you can ask God. It's so you can put in that formal request, as the definition said. You can pray and say, Father, your word says, I need to offer spiritual sacrifices. I need you to help me. I need you to fill me. 
I need you to take me to higher heights and deeper depths. I need you to help me be in the spirit when I come into service so I can offer up spiritual sacrifices. I need you to help me bring the spirit in with me sometimes because maybe, maybe the pastor needs somebody else to come in with the spirit because pastors need encouragement. Maybe our young brother here needs some encouragement one day so somebody else can come in and encourage him and then we all can offer up these spiritual sacrifices. Got to put that, that request in, a formal request. So if you've never asked God to fill you with the spirit so you can offer spiritual sacrifices, now you know. You can ask him, amen. Amen. And if you turn with me tonight... And the last thing they said that it would be, verse 5, it would be acceptable to God. Why do we want the power of God to be acceptable unto God? That's number nine on the notes. To be acceptable unto God. So if you summed it all up and you say, well, I want to make it to heaven. I don't know a whole bunch of scriptures, but I do know that God's going to judge me, and I just want to make it in. If that's all you knew, you want to go to heaven, you believe there's a hell, so there has to be some decision somehow, depending on which one you go to, and you know you don't get to choose, so God has to choose. He has the final say. So at the, at the bare minimum, our mind should be, Lord, I just want to be acceptable. Because when I first heard the gospel of truth, Sister Pastor Harris can tell you this because she was the first person to start teaching me the gospel of truth. In her Bible study, which was for the youth, I just happened to be the person that I was um, clubhouse manager at the apartment. So she had to rent out the clubhouse to do the Bible study for the kids. This is just a little aside before we get ready to close. So she had this Bible study, and I had to come and unlock the clubhouse so she can do the Bible study. And I lived all the way on the other side of town, and I absolutely hated it. I hated it. I hated it because I would get off work, go all the way home, got to come all the way back for this woman to do some Bible study. Hated it. But as it began to wear me down, now I know the spirit was drawing me. But at the time, I was just tired of driving back and forth. So I said in my own infinite wisdom, which is really the spirit giving me the mind to just stay for Bible study. I said, well, I'm just going to, I ain't driving all the way back. I'm just going to sit here the whole time. And then I'm going to lock up and leave. I'm just mad. I'm just going to sit there. Just mad. This woman, she, don't just, she just need to go back where she came from. Let's go and get out of town. Because she wasn't even from the town. She came in temporarily. So it was like a temporary, it was like a, she, she just need to leave. Like, how, how come she got to live here? Making my life hard. So I'm sitting there mad. And I begin to hear the word. <laughs> Forced to hear the word pretty much. And then my hard heart began to get softer and softer and softer. And then I began to look forward to coming back and hearing the word more. And jumping to the end of that short testimony, when she showed me the word of God, as she pulled me to the side, she saw that I was no longer there just to be locking and unlocking the door, that I was actually a participant of the Bible study. And she showed me the word of God. And my answer to her was, I don't want to be wrong. Only thing I knew, ain't know nothing about nothing. Didn't know whether to be a Holy Ghost. Didn't know I was called. I told her, I see it right there in the Bible. I don't want to be wrong. So at the very least, don't worry about how many scriptures you know. You got to make a vow to God. You just don't want to be wrong. Translate that into what the Bible said. Be acceptable unto God. That's why I encourage everybody. Just be acceptable unto God. Come back to service. The, the Spirit will teach you. The Bible will show you what that means and how to be acceptable unto God. If you turn with me over to Colossians chapter 1, Colossians 1 and 9, and that's a little bit to the left of, of where we are in the Bible, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, talking about that we should desire the power of God. There's so much in the power of God because salvation is in the power of God. So Colossians 1 and 9, for the sake of time, I will go ahead and read it. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. 
Number 10, spiritual understanding. And this is where I stop for tonight. For this cause we also, for all the things we've talked about tonight, it's for this cause that anybody in leadership should continue to pray for the people. We had prayer requests tonight. One was for my, my cousin. And she's sick in her body. She needs a healing. But more so than a healing, she needs the power of God. She needs the Holy Ghost. She needs to go to heaven. I desire her to go to heaven. Maybe she doesn't desire to go. But I desire for her to go to heaven. And it's for this cause that I don't cease to pray for her. And to desire... There's that word again. That ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. When you desire the power of God, it's for you to have spiritual understanding. The only way you can have spiritual understanding is by the Holy Spirit. We have evil spirit understanding already. That's how we did all the evil things we did. We understood what Satan wanted us to do. It wasn't hard to understand to go do whatever it was we was doing. We just went and did it. But this spiritual understanding comes by the Holy Ghost. And we'll continue down the other scriptures next Tuesday to talk about what kind of spiritual understanding. What does that mean? What does it look like? What does it sound like? How do you know when you begin to have spiritual understanding? But for tonight, we should desire the power of God that we can have spiritual understanding. Understanding that in every situation, in every decision, and even our own emotions, we can understand what the Spirit likes and how He wants us to feel and, and how God thinks we should feel. So I'll stop there tonight before I get ahead of myself. I want to encourage you. Desire the power of God. I'm going to read the definition of desire. To hope for. To wish for. To ask for. To invite a conscious impulse towards something, a formal request, or an action. If you make a formal request as we stand, a formal request, ask God to give you the power of God. Make a formal request to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, we have not because we ask not. He said, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. He said, if, if ye being evil, talking about us people. He said, if ye being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. We know how to give good gifts, even if they're not our children. You know, if you see another child, you want them to be happy. You got some candy. If the parents say, okay, you're going to give them some candy. You got some, something to drink, you're going to give it to them. They need clothes, you're going to give it to them. He says, even though we're evil, now this is Jesus talking, we know how to give good gifts to our children. Then he turned around and said, as I close, how much more, since we're evil, we can give these good gifts. He said, how much more shall your heavenly father Give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. That's what the Bible says. Jesus was not talking about money, cars, and fame. He said, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And the Holy Spirit is the power of God. So make your formal request. Ask God to give you the power of God, the Holy Spirit. Because after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. Amen. Let's look unto the Lord tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus.